What if I told you that medieval peasants had heating methods so effective, they might put your modern furnace to shame? From central hearths to heated floors, these forgotten techniques kept entire families warm during brutal winters. But how did they do it without electricity or insulation? In this video, we'll uncover 10 ingenious medieval heating methods that not only worked, but also brought communities closer together. Get ready to travel back in time and discover how our ancestors turned survival into an art form. Central hearths, the heart of medieval warmth at the center of every medieval home was the hearth, a simple yet brilliant solution to combat the intense cold. Unlike modern fireplaces, which are placed against a wall, medieval hearths were positioned in the middle of the main room. This allowed heat to spread more evenly, warming every corner of the space. The hearths were built with stones that absorbed heat from the flames and continued to radiate it for hours, even after the fire died down. It was like having a natural heater in the center of the house. However, there was one problem, smoke. Since medieval homes lacked efficient chimneys, smoke would slowly rise and escape through a hole in the roof, leaving the interior filled with soot and a strong burnt smell. But the peasants didn't mind too much. For them, the warmth provided by the hearth was what mattered. It was where families gathered to cook, eat, and share stories. The hearth wasn't just a source of heat, it was the heart of domestic life, a symbol of comfort and security during the harsh winter. And while the hearth kept the interior warm, the peasants also had techniques to harness external heat. But that's a story for the next topic. Solar heating, harnessing the power of the sun. While the central hearth warmed the inside of homes, medieval peasants also knew how to harness external heat, the sun. Medieval architecture, though rudimentary, was incredibly efficient at capturing and storing solar energy. Homes were designed to maximize sun exposure during winter, when the sun was lower on the horizon. Large south-facing windows allowed sunlight to enter and warm the interior. Thick stone or clay walls absorbed heat during the day and released it slowly at night, maintaining a stable temperature. It was a primitive but effective form of passive solar heating, a technique we still use today in sustainable buildings. Additionally, peasants used materials like wood and straw, which had natural insulating properties. These materials helped retain heat inside the house, preventing it from escaping quickly. In colder regions, homes were partially buried in the ground, providing additional insulation against the freezing exterior. But solar heating wasn't just about comfort, it was a matter of survival. On sunny days, peasants opened doors and windows to let heat in, while on cloudy days, they relied more on the hearth and other heat sources. This combination of techniques shows how medieval people were masters of adaptation. They didn't have advanced technology, but they used what was around them in clever ways. And while the sun warmed their homes, Animals also played a crucial role in heating. Thatched roofs, nature's insulation. If you've ever seen a medieval house in movies or illustrations, you've probably noticed the thatched roofs. These roofs weren't just charming. They were a practical and effective solution for keeping heat inside during winter. Made of densely packed straw, they acted as natural insulation, preventing heat from escaping and cold from entering. Straw was an abundant and cheap material, making it ideal for peasant homes. Besides being a great thermal insulator, it was also water resistant, helping to protect the house from rain and snow. However, thatched roofs had their challenges. They needed to be replaced regularly as they rotted over time and could attract insects and rodents. But for the peasants, the benefits outweighed the inconveniences. During winter, the thick layer of straw helped retain the heat generated by the central hearth and the sun inside the house. Additionally, straw was a lightweight material, making it easier to build and maintain roofs. Interestingly, thatched roofs also had a social role. Building and maintaining roofs were community tasks that brought neighbors and families together. It was an opportunity to strengthen community bonds while ensuring everyone was prepared for winter. And while thatched roofs kept heat inside the house, the animals living next door also contributed to heating. Livestock heating, animals as natural heaters. In a medieval home, animals weren't just sources of food and labor. They were also essential allies in the fight against the cold. Many peasant homes had attached stables where cows, sheep, chickens, and even pigs lived side by side with humans. This proximity wasn't just a matter of convenience, it was a smart heating strategy. The animal's body heat helped maintain a higher room temperature, especially during freezing nights. The walls separating the stables from the main room were thin, allowing the animal's warmth to spread to the living areas. In some cases, animals occupied up to 30% of the house, becoming a natural source of heating. Additionally, animals provided other valuable resources during winter. 
Manure, for example, was collected and used as fuel for the hearth when firewood was scarce. And of course, animals continued to produce milk, eggs, and wool, which were essential for the peasant's survival. However, this cohabitation had its challenges. The smell of animals in stables could be strong, and the insects they attracted were a constant nuisance. But for the peasants, the benefits outweighed the inconveniences. After all, in a harsh winter, every source of heat was precious. And while animals helped warm the houses, peasants also had techniques to heat the ground beneath their feet. Heated floors, the warmth underfoot. Imagine walking on a warm floor on a freezing winter morning. For medieval peasants, this wasn't a luxury, it was a necessity. They developed an ingenious technique to heat their floors, heated stones. This technique involved using large stones, which were heated in the central hearth and then placed under the wooden or dirt floor. The stones retained heat for hours, radiating it into the room and keeping the inhabitants' feet warm. It was a primitive form of radiant heating, similar to the modern underfloor heating systems we use today. In addition to stones, some peasants also used bricks or clay to build floors that absorbed and retained heat. These materials were especially effective in partially buried homes, where the ground helped insulate the heat and maintain a stable temperature. But heated floors weren't just about comfort. They also had a practical role. In homes where the floor was damp and cold, the heat from the stones helped dry the moisture and prevent illnesses. Additionally, the radiant heat from the floor complemented the central hearth, creating a more pleasant environment for the whole family. Of course, this technique required effort. The stones needed to be heated regularly, and the floor had to be carefully built to avoid fires. But for the peasants, the effort was worth it. After all, in a harsh winter, every source of heat was precious. And while heated floors kept feet warm, peasants also had portable methods to stay warm during the day. Portable warmers, stones and chauffettes, while the heat from the hearth and heated floors kept medieval homes cozy, peasants also needed solutions to stay warm outside the house. After all, work in the fields or villages didn't stop, even in the depths of winter. That's where portable warmers came in. Heated stones and the so-called chauffettes. Heated stones were one of the simplest and most effective solutions. They were placed in the fire until hot and then wrapped in thick cloths or animal skins. Peasants carried them in their hands, pockets, or even inside their clothes, enjoying the warmth they radiated for hours. It was a practical way to stay warm while working or traveling. The chauffettes, on the other hand, were small metal containers, like cans or pots, filled with embers or burning charcoal. These devices were especially popular among women, who used them to warm their hands or legs while doing household chores or walking through the village. Some chauffettes even had decorated handles, showing that even in tough times, medieval people didn't give up on style. However, these portable warmers had their risks. Overheated stones could cause burns, and chauffettes required caution to avoid fires. Still, they were indispensable for peasants who needed to face the cold in all situations. And when night fell, it was time to think about another form of heating, the beds. But how did the medievals ensure their beds were warm and comfortable? The answer lies in a solution that mixed practicality with some unwanted guests. Bed warmers, warming pans and canopy beds. After a long day of work in the cold, nothing beats a warm bed, right? Medieval peasants thought the same, but without electric blankets or duvets, they had to get creative. The solution? Warming pans and canopy beds. Warming pans were metal containers, usually made of copper or brass, filled with burning charcoal. Before bed, peasants would slide these pans between the layers of bedding, warming the sheets and keeping the cold at bay. It was a simple but effective technique that guaranteed a few hours of thermal comfort. However, care was needed. Poorly placed pans could cause fires or burns. Canopy beds were another smart strategy. These beds had heavy curtains made of thick fabric that could be closed around the mattress. Besides creating a sense of privacy, the curtains helped trap body heat, turning the bed into a kind of warm cabin. To enhance the effect, some peasants used wool blankets or animal skins, which provided additional insulation against the cold. However, not everything was perfect. Hay beds, common at the time, were warm but also attracted rats and insects. Imagine trying to sleep while hearing the sound of rodents scurrying under the mattress. Still, for the peasants, warmth was more important than absolute comfort. And while warm beds ensured more peaceful nights, the medievals also had techniques to amplify heat during the day. But these solutions involved a bit of engineering and a lot of creativity. Heat reflectors, amplifying warmth Imagine being able to increase the heat of a fire without needing more firewood. Medieval peasants did exactly that using heat reflectors, an ingenious technique that turned fire into an even more efficient heating source.
These reflectors were made of materials like polished metal or smooth stone, positioned behind or around the hearth. The reflective surface redirected the heat from the flames into the room, instead of letting it escape through the chimney or walls. It was a primitive but brilliant way to maximize the use of fire, especially in homes where firewood was scarce. Additionally, heat reflectors had a practical role. They helped protect wooden or straw walls from the direct heat of the flames, reducing the risk of fires. In larger homes, movable reflectors were used to direct heat to specific areas, like beds or work tables. But reflectors weren't just functional, they also had an aesthetic touch. Some were decorated with engravings or patterns, showing that even the most utilitarian objects could be an expression of art. Of course, this technique required some practical knowledge. Reflectors needed to be positioned correctly to avoid concentrating heat in a single spot, which could cause discomfort or even damage. After all, in a harsh winter, every extra degree of heat made a difference. And while reflectors amplified heat inside the home, the medievals also knew how to turn heating into a communal experience. But that's a story that involves bonfires, feasts, and a lot of togetherness. Communal bonfires, warming bodies and souls. In a medieval village, winter wasn't faced alone. It was a collective battle. And nothing symbolized this unity better than the communal bonfires. Large fires maintained in squares or common areas where everyone could gather to warm up and share stories. These bonfires were more than a heat source. They were the heart of social life during winter. As the flames crackled, villagers gathered around to chat, sing, and even dance. It was a moment to forget the cold and strengthen community bonds, essential for survival in tough times. Additionally, communal bonfires had a practical role. They served as heating points for those who needed to leave their homes, whether for work or to visit neighbors. In smaller villages, where homes were simpler and less heated, these bonfires were a true lifesaver. But the warmth of the bonfires wasn't just physical, it was also emotional. On especially cold nights, villagers organized festivals and rituals around the fire. Yule, for example, was a pagan celebration marking the winter solstice and included large bonfires, feasts, and gift exchanges. These moments of joy helped keep spirits high, even on the darkest winter days. And while communal bonfires brought people together, they also served as a reminder that, together, the medievals could overcome any challenge. After all, winter was harsh, but solidarity was stronger. The resilience of medieval peasants during winter was a trial by fire for peasants. With freezing temperatures, limited resources, and harsh living conditions, every day was a battle for survival. Yet through creativity, teamwork, and resilience, they found ways to face the cold and ensure their families made it through to spring. From central hearths to communal bonfires, from thatched roofs to heated floors, every detail of peasant life reveals a deep connection to nature and an incredible ability to adapt. They didn't have modern technology or abundant resources, but they used what was around them in clever ways. And while they fought the cold, they also found time to celebrate life. Festivals like Yule and Christmas brought light and joy to the darkest months, reminding everyone that winter wasn't just a time of deprivation, but also of unity and hope. The story of medieval peasants teaches us that human resilience can overcome even the toughest challenges. They didn't just survive winter, they turned survival into an art form, using creativity, solidarity, and a deep understanding of the world around them. And you, how do you think you'd fare in a medieval winter? Could you face the cold with the same simple yet ingenious strategies? Let us know in the comments what surprised you most on this journey through time. And don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating stories about life in the past.